so we're gonna do character creation. I think I kind of already have an idea what I want to play from a character standpoint. It's gonna take a minute before it shows up. There we go. Um, I sound checked all this earlier, but like I said, I'm in a new space. So certainly if you guys sense that some of the sound is off, let me know uh, so that I can correct it. The world of darkness is a place where immortal monsters pull the strings of humanity. Violence and despair are common here. Beautiful. The world is bleak, Beautiful. but escape is an ever-present commodity, perhaps too present. Excellent. Afterlife. Misha, you guys are animals. You guys were waiting on it. I think it's like almost a month to the day since I streamed, so I apologize if everyone's subscriptions ran out while I was moving. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Um, so we could go through and answer a series of questions. But I don't think we're going to do that. I think we're going to just make my dude. Which obviously it kind of already knew I was going to do because I tested. Um, so we are going to be a Toreador. I don't know if I'm actually even saying that right. Toreador. Uh, Toreador picture themselves as artists and visionaries. Yeah, can I change the volume on the music? It's a little loud. Not yet. We'll have to get a game. Toreador picture themselves as artists and visionaries, and they value the high society mentality that the Camarilla reinforces. Of all clans, the Toreador are the most connected to the mortal world through arts and entertainment. Toreador are beautiful creatures, svelte and seductive, much like myself, uh, and move almost effortlessly through the society of the living. The Toreador's empathy is both a gift and a burden. All humanity shifts are doubled. So humanity is something we'll get into. Um, there's a couple of cool things that are in play here that you wouldn't see in a normal RPG um, that are kind of carried over from the tabletop game. Uh, so we can choose a background. This is something added with the plus patch for this game. But I'm going to be honest, this like tweaks character creation in a way that I don't really know because I don't know the game well enough. So I think we're going to be lame and just roll with uh, no history and just leave it plain and uh, kind of standard issue here but this is us this is going to be our avatar again the game's from 2004 uh, so bear that in mind it is a little bit on the quiet side Doo -doo -doo, Julie Fish is here that was awfully quiet Maybe. all right so now we're going to make our guy um this screen looks more complicated than it actually is. Again, because it's adapted from a tabletop RPG, we're using a lot of the same mentality that you would use when rolling a character for that game. So we have attributes, abilities, and disadvantages. Julie Fish subscribed as well. You guys are great. A hype train to welcome me back. I think you guys coordinated this. I think this is I think this is a false hype train. But I'm still hyped, so thank you. Um these kind of three different groups of uh, of stats work together to then increase our feats here on the right. And there's going to be hidden die rolls and all that stuff that comes with like classic computer RPGs. We'll explain that when we get into it. Let me see here. We are going to be, we have two points for social. We're going to put both of those in charisma. So as you can see that up our persuasion. Misha Fish is here. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, we're going to put a point into perception. With three points for brawl. So we could do. No, let's go into dodge. I think we're going to wind up doing firearms more than anything else. So brawl is only going to pay dividends in the very, very beginning. Subterfuge would give us a point in seduction. We can throw one in there just so that that's not completely devoid. We'll take a point in firearms to get that started. Computer's going to give us a point in hacking. And then to scholarship, scholarship gives us another point in persuasion. Persuasion four to start is uh, pretty good. I'm okay with that. Yeah, Venom, it's been ages. How are things, man? I keep, uh, I keep trying to get in and, and jump in and see some people that I haven't seen streaming in a bit, but, uh, I'm like out of gas super early since then. I'm still, still adjusting to a fresh schedule. Um, these disciplines are kind of like our powers, like our superpowers. Um, I, I guess magic would be the best way to describe it. 
So we'll get into those and what they do as we use them, but I think we're gonna wind up, this would give us one point to wits. So what's does it, wits increases our combat defense and our hacking. But this gives us supernatural speed. Presence reduces. So this is like scaring the shit out of people. All right, we're gonna take the point in aspects just so that I can guarantee we have pretty solid hacking from the get go. I think that's the plan. All right, so that's our character right off the bat. Um, we're pretty good at ranged combat. We have pretty good defense, hacking, inspection, research. We're very persuasive. We're a little bit sexy. We got some seduction um, and we can take a little bit of bashing damage, but other types of damage will wreck our shit. I will explain real quick, although they're gonna do a little bit of this in game. Humanity here is gonna track basically how monstrous our character is. If we play like a, uh, a vampire that still has like a code of ethics or if we just become a complete asshole. Um, and then these masks are the masquerade, which is basically like uh, us intentionally making sure that we don't expose our vampirism to the people around us. All right. Let's accept, and then it's gonna show us a little bit of a cutscene here to set up the game. The embrace, the act of transforming a mortal into a vampire. <laughs> I wanna show you something. What do you think she wanted to show us? Spooky games in October. Yeah, so did you play Until Dawn? That game rules. The move was exhausting. <laughs> it was very tiring. I'm very glad it's done. It was a, a long, long drive with a cat that did not want to be in a car. Ooh, Amnesia. Did you do original Amnesia or did you do the new one? First one. I I wanted to do that someday. That's super spooky. Good evening. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. No, just as Prince. I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Choo choo doggo. Many of you have good. come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as. Up to tonight, I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Whoop. Extremely short-lived appearance from our Which sire. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit. Getting rowdy. All I'm saying is that he better not do it. If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed Invisible in the ways of our kind of relief. and be granted the same rights. 
Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Absolutely, buddy. Thanks for dropping in, man. I know it's really dark. That's something we're going to have to kind of keep an eye on with this game. Um, because it is obviously kind of like dark Your intentionally. Sire, tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must, must adhere to if we wish to Watch survive. the prince's character model when here. Someone, it's so anyone weirdly proportioned. Laws, they undermine the well-worn <laughs> fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So, what I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great Clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't with the resub. What's up, buddy? Welcome in. Welcome good in. It's good to see you. Not only do vampires hide from mortals, they hide from themselves as well, pretending they are not the horror they have truly become. All right, so we got a little bit of the old tutorial action, uh, which is pretty brief and introduces us to a really fun character. So. I'm going to tweak uh, a little bit here. I'm going to bring the gamma up just a touch. I don't want to go too much because I don't want to blow everything out. Uh, oh my God, there's only a single volume. I can't even change the volume for different things. So I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys used Steam like in the very, very beginning of Steam. But if you did, this menu probably looks really simple. Uh, and really familiar. This is like the hard baked options screen that original Steam uses in like the uh, the original Source Engine games and like server browsers and stuff. That's that's how old this is. All right, let's jump back in. It's exactly like Half Life Two Afterlife. It's uh, it's built on the Source Engine and was actually finished before Half Life Two was but was not allowed to launch until after Half-Life did due to Troika's uh, contract with uh, Valve. All right. <laughs> what a scene, man. Hooey. <laughs> then it is plop you out here like a naked baby in the woods. <laughs> How about that? Ah, look, you know, it's probably a lot for you to take in. So uh, why don't you let me show you the ropes? What do you say? I will gladly I'm take Jack. a tutorial. What's important is I'm offering help. You make it back from Santa Monica with your hide, and we'll trade life stories, okay? Till then, I got about this much time. You in or out? The writing in this is so much fun. Um, I could use the help. I don't have much time. Just give me the basics. What happened in there? Let me get a what happened in there. Is he going to give us a little extra info? What happened in there? Don't worry, kiddo. You'll adjust. I'd love to explain it all, but time's a wasting. You want some help or what? Uh, okay. I, I could use the help. All right. Uh, why don't we, uh, step out back here? Yeah, let's get away from that horrible place. Christ, it's stuffy in there, huh? This is much better. Now, we ain't got much time, but I figure somebody should do you in on the bare bones stuff at least. You know, could save your hide. You look wobbly. You even had a drink yet? Uh, a drink of what? Oh, man, we're popping a cherry here. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you're going to love this. All right, check it out. Blood, it's your new rack of lamb, your new champagne. It's blood, your new fucking heroin, kid. <laughs> Get ready, though, because, hey, it's never as sweet as the first time. Well, what do I do? Down around the corner there, I saw this human. Poor SOB can't find his car. <laughs> so, what do I... I mean, uh... Alright. You go down there, catch... Hey, Crybot, Jack's the best. Up on him. Then 
bare those little fangs and feed. Don't worry if you weren't captain of the wrestling team or something, because it'll come so naturally you think you've done it a thousand times already. Won't he become a vampire then? <laughs> Forget that comic book crap, kid. It don't work that way. Now go for it. Be sure, though, and this is important, so listen up. Be sure not to drain him dry, okay? It might be hard to resist, but don't kill him. Mm, all right. This is your blood pool. So our the right meter is our blood pool. Um, kind of a hard one to wrap your head around, but it is a vampire game. So the red is for blood, not for health. Different. Blood is the fuel for your vampiric powers or dissipates. When your blood pool is low, you need to refill it. Humans are an abundant source of blood in most areas of the game. One is in the alley around the corner. All right, Jack. I'm going to make you proud, buddy. Hey, man. You having trouble finding your car? Feeding on humans fills your blood pool. To feed, approach your victim and press the feed key, which defaults to F when you are close. It is important that humans do not see you feed on other humans. Once you have begun feeding on your victim, you will see this bar appear. This represents your victim's blood pool. You should stop feeding before emptying his blood pool and killing him. Press P again to stop feeding. Um, I'm also going to drop a save in here. Um, just because, like I say, the game tends to be a little finicky. Hey, bud. Hey, were you having trouble finding your car? Oh, yeah. Good stuff. All right, so they're being very generous, letting me completely fill my blood pool without even making it close on killing him here. Yummy. All right, Jack, I drank a bunch of blood and it tasted yeah. good. What's up? Ah, uh, yeah. Hell yeah, you're feeling it. I can see it in your eyes. You're a born-again predator. Feeling that blood bubbling inside you, lifting you up. That's it, kid. That's what it's all about right there. God, the voice acting is tremendous. Um I yeah, I don't know that I don't know that we'd be all gung-ho, right? I think I think we're gonna go with the I don't know how to feel about it, but it does feel good. He almost seems like he's enjoying it as much as well, I think that's it, right? Is like he mentioned that it never tastes as good as your first time. Jack's definitely been at this game a long while. So he's probably like a little bit jealous about how sweet it is that we just got our first blood. All right, now you got the blood. You're feeling all kick ass, feeling better than your best day living. But wait, it gets better. All kindred, kindred, that's a our word for vampire. All kindred have a few things in common. Things that set them right square above humans on the food chain. Yeah, like what? Like sharper senses, a body that can take a beating, and if you play your cards right, eternal life. That's no sure bet, but still, a chance at immortality is not a bad deal. And that's just for starters. French benefits for joining the club. So, I'm gonna live forever? Well, you can still be destroyed, but forget the books and the movies. Garlic? Worthless. A cross? Pfft, shove it right up their ass. <laughs> a steak? Only if it catches you in the heart, and then it just paralyzes you. Running water? Eh, that's no problem. I bathe. Occasionally. Now, a shotgun blast to the head. Oh, that's trouble, boy. Fire? That's real trouble. Sunlight? Well, you catch a sunrise and it's all over, kiddo. Get it? Hmm. Got it. Okay, now. You, uh, you do that. At the bottom of your screen is the use icon. This icon appears when you're able to use the object in front of you. Press the use key to use the object that it indicates. The use icon is context sensitive. That is, it will look different depending on the object you can use. In this case, a door that can be opened. Gang war just break out. Even more exciting. I love the reused assets. You know, for what it's worth, though, like, this is a company using a, a brand new engine that had been 
pretty well under wraps. I think they did a pretty good job with it, all things considered. Alright, where are we headed? Press the jump key to jump. Jump on the boxes against the wall and up onto the walkway above. Alright, we can do that. We might, I don't know if we're going to third person. I like the crane kick pose we get. Your feats are the combinations of your various abilities and attributes. The higher your feat scores, the better you are at the activities they influence. Inspection is a feat. It is the combination of perception and investigation. It allows you to see hidden and secret things. For example, the lock pick on the crate in front of you. You can find your feats listed on the right-hand side of your character sheet. You can pick up certain objects in the world. If you are able to pick up an object, you will see a use icon appear for it when you are close enough to, uh, and the crosshairs in the center of your screen are over it. Press the use key to pick up the lock pick. All right. Bam. Lock pick gains. Oh, hi, Jack. Down here. Stay away from the windows. Then why'd you oh, wave me in front of the windows? Sabat. Yeah. Christ, I was hoping to spare you this shit till later. Uh, the Sabat. Well, uh, they're mostly mindless, bloodthirsty assholes. That's all you need to know for now, all right? So, what's up? The Sabat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd raise a little hell and put a little heat on the new prince. What's the prince of? Prince of? No time for political rundown. Job one, get out of here alive. Sabat might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like you wants to mess with. What am I supposed to do? Shh, shh. Heads up. Back away. These idiots. If I could just try and run down the ship. into the office. The door's around the corner here. I'm on it. To access your quest log, press the quest log key. The quest log contains information about your quests as well as any notes and instructions you will need. Complete them. Jihad for Beginners. A vicious vampire faction known as the Sabat has launched an assault on the secret Camarilla gathering downtown. You and Jack are caught in the middle. To escape, you must obtain entry into the office. That ain't no thing. Come on now. Although I went the wrong way, so it was kind of a thing. Ooh, that was pretty bad. That's all right. When a door is locked, you will see this use icon. Lock picking, a combination of dexterity and security, is a feat that helps you to open locked doors with a lock pick. When you see this icon, press the use key to try to lock pick it. Once you have begun lock picking, you will see this bar. It represents the time needed to pick the lock. If the value of your lockpick feat is equal to or greater than the difficulty of the lock, you will be able to pick it. So it doesn't like roll for a lockpick, it's just a flat, do you have the skill you needed? So, get it, get it. We in, baby. Jack just burst in through the window. Takeout menu. All right, this is just decorative. I've done all this before, but I can't for the life of me remember all the little bits and pieces of the tutorial here. Ah, uh, shortcut. Well, nicely done, though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? <laughs> I had my moments. Cool. Now, if you want a lesson on how really not to act, take notes from those sabat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great, congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go roar and you beat your chest and that's what you can expect. Wait, I I've still got that list of people from high school. Why not? It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. And it's, and 
That's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. Oh, I get it. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well, it ain't a casual thing for a fledgling like you. What do you mean? What could happen? That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. Oof. They make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. Camarilla? So, they're like the vampire good guys? Mm, yeah. I'll tell you what I think some other time, maybe. I like to let people form their own opinions. All right, so what's next? All right, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. And you know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. Okay, but what does that mean exactly? You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. So look around here. We gotta get out the back there through that magnetically sealed door. There must be a key someplace. All right, I'll find it. Area indicator. So this is above my health pool there on the left. Um, realistically, the only part of the HUD you guys aren't going to be able to see, because of my green screen, green screen thing right now, I'm going to be covering up my active weapon. It's the only thing you'll be missing. The icon to the left indicates that you are in a combat area. So the gun is combat. Anything goes. So you can go ham, use all your powers. The mask is for a masquerade area, so we have to make sure that we're maintaining the masquerade. And the E is for an Elysium, vampire neutral ground. No combat or disciplines are allowed except blood buff for lockpicking. In masquerade areas, breaking the masquerade can carry dire consequences, such as the unwanted attention of vampire hunters. After five masquerade violations, your game is over. Your current number of violations is displayed in the upper right hand corner of your character sheet. So that's what those masks are on the character sheet screen. Um, again, this is like a, a cornerstone of how the tabletop system works because it keeps you from just solving every problem with crazy vampire brute force and nonsense. Skyrim vamp in modern city edition a little bit. It's, it's not quite as open as something like a Skyrim would be. I would say that it's more scale wise. It's more like a Knights of the old Republic where it's like little kind of vertical slices of areas that they give you some sandbox again. Again, I've not played through much of it. I've played like the first zone before. All right, so we got a safe here. Can I lockpick this? No, it doesn't let me interact with it. When you can read a note, you will see this use icon. Readable notes can be various items like clipboards, newspapers, and letters. To read the note, press the use key. To return to the game after reading the note, press it again. Password, chop chop. Oh, thanks, friend. When you can use a computer, you will see this use icon. Computers are often helpful in solving quests. They can hold information like emails and files, as well as control various electronic devices. Each computer will have a list of the menus and commands you can use. Many menus and commands will be password protected. Hacking, a combination of wits and computer, is a feat that allows you to hack into password protected items. You will be prompted to press Control C to attempt your hacking feat. If the value of your hacking feat is equal to or greater than the difficulty of the encryption, you will be successful. To stop using a computer, type quit or use the escape key. All right, we going in. Safe, help, quit. Uh, safe, please. Password is required. So let's Control C. We have pretty good hacking natively. We know the password from the note, but let's see this in action. Easy. Come on now. Uh, let's see. We want to unlock. Safe doors unlocked. Home. Or can I just quit from a sub menu? View. When you approach a container, you will see this use icon. The use icon, uh, press the use icon to open it. If it is locked, you can try and open it with your lock pick. Once opened, your inventory appears on the left side of the screen and the container's contents are on the right. So we have an automated access systems key card. There we go. Now take that key card and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from topside. Got it. 
Press the inventory key to access your inventory. Click on the left and right arrow buttons above your inventory to access different inventory categories. Keys are located in the equipment carry uh, equipment category on a key ring. Most keys, once used, will not be needed again and are removed. Some doors have magnetic locks and cannot be picked open. They must be opened with the appropriate card key, much like the one we have just ransacked. We've done it. All right, so yeah, it takes that right out of our inventory. Now, because I'm using the plus patch, I think it's down here somewhere. There's gonna be an interaction with a cop, um, and it's it's like really rough and shoddy voice work. So bear with me here. God, Jack, you're a savage. You've been wounded by the Sabbat. This blue bar represents your current level of health. As you sustain regular damage, it will turn black. If your health is completely depleted, you suffer final death and your game is over. Your health regenerates over time. When you are feeding, your health regenerates much faster. If your health bar begins to turn yellow, it means you have sustained aggravated damage. Certain hazards, like fire and supernatural attacks, cause aggravated damage. This takes much longer to heal than regular damage. Sons of bitches. Ah, ow, Jack, they hurt me, Jack. Fucking waste of unlife, these Sabat Vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey, look at them potholes. Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest catch, but it'll do. What's the difference? Blood's blood, right? Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. <laughs> You say so. Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. Let's say I get a little overzealous. W what happens then? An innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's going to cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. The beast? What exactly does that mean? The beast? It's always there, waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. So, I can't kill anyone? That seems a little, uh, restricting. I, 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 I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12-gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self-preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> I think I follow. The only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity, and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. Got it. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's gonna drain fast. I'll be back in a minute. Jack is so much fun. Remember, you want to avoid draining your victims. Draining innocent humans will give you a penalty to your humanity. The lower your humanity, the closer you get to the beast. If your, huma if your humanity gets too low, you will begin to lose control of your character. This is known as frenzying. It may result in a masquerade violation if you are around. Oh, I accidentally clicked blood. Right clicked instead of left clicked. Well... I need some blood now, sir. I actually don't need to feed now because we took so long talking to Jack, but we can get a little blood points. Oh boy, yeah, he drains quick. All right, you're good. <laughs> what did he say? He said crab nipple this and crab nipple that. I don't think that's what he actually said. All right, Jack, I'm feeling good Not now, buddy. Quite good, huh? Yeah, you can do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. Worse than a bum's neck? That scarf tasted like old gym socks. Well, give it a what try. up, Nip Nips? Good old crab nipple hobos. I'll think about it. Rats can be fed upon to gain a single blood point. You will find some rats at the other end of the alley, near the yellow windows. 
Killing rats has no impact on your humanity score. Humans do not react well when they see live rats being sucked on. I mean, that's true. I, I don't know that that's universal uh, across every video game that I've played and real life encounter that I've had, uh, but it seems pretty legit. We don't need any blood though. So we know we can do it, but I don't, we're not gonna worry about it. Jack, I'm good. I drank enough of the bump. We're good. I'm topped up on crab nips. <laughs> Just couldn't bear it, huh? Ah, it's okay. Polite kindred society looks down on that kind of thing anyway. Well, I can see why. I'm not down with rodent myself. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Just one guy? Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. Sneak where? The building across from us with the garage door. There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. I'll do my best. See you in a minute. All right, go. Gone. Sneaking, a combination of dexterity and stealth, is a feat that allows you to move among your victims and enemies without being detected. You must be crouched to sneak. You can crouch by pressing the control key by default. The meter to the left indicates the proximity of your enemies and their chances of detecting you if they are looking your way. Green means you are completely safe, yellow means you might be seen, and red means they will see you if they look in your direction. An enemy's chance of detecting you is directly tied to your sneaking feet. If you are detected, your enemies will often say as much and come to investigate. Alright, so since I don't know how hard the sneaking is, we'll do a save here. Are we good, baby? Where's the dude? He's up there. Hi, Jack. I kind of wish you could have come and helped, dog. Alright. We are here. Check out third person while sneaking. Oh, we a creepy boy. Look at my legs. <laughs> Hang on. I gotta get into the light. Did it. Did it. I am not this nimble. I think I don't think that my guy was like this when he woke up this morning. I think that he definitely was only suddenly able to bend his knees in this direction. All right, he's on the other side of this. Wait, is he patrolling? He's patrolling. All right, whoa. Did he just get blown up with a fucking grenade? Right, we're pretty chill. Doodly. I have been detected because I suck. All right. Easy peasy. Here we go. How do you see me? He didn't see me. That's what shit. Alright. So wait, I, we see a dude get hit by like a flashback. And then this guy's like super attentive. Alright, hang on. You gonna patrol again? No, he's staying put. Oh, come on, you can do it. Here we go. We're the greatest of all time. Jack, I did it. It was scary, but I did it. Inside here. Seems that shovel head outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry. He's probably greener than you. Uh, that's pretty green. The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. How can that be? Uh, he's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that, make shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. Mm. I'll do my best. He is a vampire, so be ready. Should we try to be tough? Like, we're got, we gotta get cool like Jack, right? That was bored, ready. Go get him. Come on. To engage in unarmed combat, you need to equip your fists and then attack. To equip your fists, find a set of fists and attach them to your wrists. Oh no, sorry, it's press the melee weapons key, which is F1, until your fist icon is highlighted in your melee weapon inventory list, and then click the left mouse button. 
Your unarmed combat feat is a combination of strength and brawl. It uh, directly affects your success in unarmed combat. Excuse me. There are different attacks depending on what direction you are moving when you initiate your attack. Try different combinations of moving and attacking in the upcoming battle. You can also block your enemy's attacks by pressing and holding the attack mode key, which is tab. And then we put our fists away with H. Got it. All right. Give me fists. We have fisticuffs. Jack, I don't... Maybe I should have gone back out the door I was using previously. Oh, damn. I like how bright it was when he hit me. Oh, we gave him the big bop. Can I use... There we go. Oh, I didn't even need it. Try to use a vampire power. It's so dark right here. Jack, I did it. I punched a man. That's that. Sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Saban are going all out. Better head underground. Avoid straight bullets. Mm, sounds like a good strategy. Go get the tire iron that shovel head dropped. He ain't gonna need it. Okay. If I can find it. Oh, my perception found it for me. You've just picked up a tire iron. To equip this weapon, press the melee weapons key until the tire iron icon is highlighted in your melee weapons list. Uh, the icon that's behind me that you guys can't see is the one that tells me what weapon I have equipped. All right, cool. Tire iron, go. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. See ya. All right, I think this might be where we encounter the cop with the bad voiceover that gets added by the plus edition, so... Oh, come on. Whoop! Yeah, okay. Stop. Combat is not the only solution for sticky situations. You can also use your feats and disciplines in dialogue. When you are able to do this, your responses will show up in different colors, and when using higher resolution, different fonts. And they are indicated below. So the red is a presence response, which costs us blood because we're using one of our vampire disciplines. Blue is persuasion. The pink swirly is seductive. And the green block letters are intimidation you. responses. Just stay back. Keep your distance. Now, who the hell are you? You involved in all this? Because I'm going to radio this in and SWAT will be all over this place. Uh, no, but... If SWAT comes, they'll drive all the gunmen down here. You want that? No. Well, I, uh, I left my radio in the Caprice anyway. Look, I I'm just trying to escape. Is there another way out? Yeah. Okay. All right. This way. This will lead us up to the warehouse. We can maybe sneak out that way. You better stay here. It's too dangerous for you. All right. So that is over and done with. We got more bad beaters. When you're in a position to perform a stealth kill, you'll see this icon. Stealth kills have the advantage of being silent. To perform a stealth kill, equip your fists or a melee weapon, crouch and sneak up behind your victim until you see the stealth kill icon, and then press the use key. All right, go. <laughs> stealth kill. Got him. Oh, hey, Jack. Not sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. I'm going to keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them hold up. Uh, great. Just my luck. Uh, disciplines are your vampiric powers and cost a certain amount of blood from your blood pool to activate. An innate ability common to all vampires is blood heal, which heals you. This icon indicates the power you currently have selected. There are two kinds of disciplines, passive disciplines that directly affect you, and targeted disciplines that directly affect your enemies. Blood buff is another common uh, ability common to all vampires. Scroll the mouse wheel to select blood buff and use that power key. Blood buff gives you a temporary bonus to all of your physical attributes. It's useful in a variety of situations, like picking a lock that would otherwise be too difficult. Note, in Elysium areas, you can use blood buff while picking a lock only. Is there anything else in here? Doesn't look like it. The tutorial's been pretty thorough, so. Alright, so. With blood buff. Now we try again. Nail it.
Torador have three unique disciplines. Auspex is a second sight that allows you to see the auras of others. Celerity is supernatural speed. And Presence is the mystical projection of personality, inspiring fear and awe. Auspex gives you the ability to see people's auras. The aura color indicates an individual's disposition. Auspex also increases your perception, important to both ranged combat and inspection feats. The use of Auspex is not a masquerade violation. There's a guard up ahead. Use Auspex to see his aura through the machinery. Scroll the mouse wheel to select it and to activate it. Remember, it is a passive discipline. Make sure to pay attention to the discipline timer on the bottom right of your screen. Once you see the guard, equip the tire iron, move forward, and kill him. Well, uh, all right, we didn't really get a chance to use our Auspex, so that's fine. Are they gonna make me do it again? Okay. Oh, boo. All right, we can see him. Let's get it. Oh, you mean we're fucking around, house. Dog, you're a tutorial group. Just stand still. Yo, my man's is not effing around. There we go. Wait. Wait, we will not use it until after the thing pops up, I guess? Once you kill the, once you see the guard, equip it and, okay. Oh, is it super loud? I don't know how to fix the audio because there's not multiple sliders. Like, because the dialogue's coming through good, right? Okay. Just when I hit the the metal there, the clang. I guess let me leave aspects up while we're fighting him. Ow. Yo, I'm getting my ass whipped. There we go. We're good? I gotta throw a blood heal. Okay. I think they're clearing out. There's no need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. Come to an elevator around the way. I'll meet you over there. Meet you there. Don't let them catch you. If I'm not there in ten minutes, call the president. Uh, we're just gonna stick with no problem. Some of the dialogue's really silly. Ooh, all right, here we go. Presence is the power to mystically project your personality. Presence is a passive discipline. Once you activate it, pay attention to the discipline timer. It is not a masquerade violation. There's a Sabat guard up ahead. Use presence to frighten and then kill him. Okay, he should lose his combat effectiveness. So we'll hit the presence. Hey, what up, dog? Oh, he didn't, he didn't lose that much of it. Oh, I don't have my tire iron equipped. There we go. Got him. Got him. We got a blood. We need something to eat. You guys hiding any bums back here? No? Okay. Celerity is vampiric supernatural speed. Celerity is a passive or time-based discipline. Once you activate it, pay attention. The use of celerity levels two through five is a masquerade violation. Bang. Uh, we are gonna go super fast and then kill him. Boom. Get him. Get him. Man, I am not good at the combat. This guy's gonna wind up being a ranged character. So we're not too worried about it. I am completely out of blood, though. Which door did I come? I came through this one. All right. When you can pick up an object and throw it, you will see this use icon. To pick it up, 
Uh, thrown objects can make a noise and can be used to distract your enemy. There's a Sabat vampire up ahead guarding the exit. Crouch, find an object that you can pick up, and throw it away from the guard to distract him. Once he's away from the exit, sneak through the room and leave. Can't we kill him? Alright, so we got our item. Right. Oh, I needed it to go a different direction. Oh, no. I take that back. It's still over there, dog. You should go check that out. He's nerd. <laughs> Fucking humans. Gangbangers protecting their turf. Oh, man. I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals about to take one for the hood. So what do we do? Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots in it will take down a human. Thanks. Well, I'm going to want it back, so don't go die and lose it. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still, a kindred's got to keep up with the times. And in modern-day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. Useless against vampires? Well, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. I hear you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. Okay. You've been given a 38 revolver. To equip it, press the range weapons key until it is highlighted and then left click. To fire, press the attack key. Some weapons, but not the 38, have an alternate firing mode such as automatic fire. Range combat, a combination of perception and firearms, is a feat that affects how well you will shoot a gun. When you equip a gun, you will see the ranged combat cursor. Its spread and speed at which it focuses is a direct result of the value of your ranged combat feet. There are some bottles on a crate at the end of the hall. Aim your cursor, wait for it to fully focus, and then use the attack to fire the gun. I mean, you got a ton of bullets, though, fam. Uh-oh. Guys, we're not a very good shot. Let's get a little closer. Uh-oh. I hit one. How many bullets did he give us? All right. Yeah, I'm sure we'll live. Don't worry about it. Oh boy, I think we're eating some rats, guys. Blech. Can I not go through this door? Oh, we, he told us to go up. Let's do this thing. I need blood. Well, I'm sure one of these guys will have blood. Oh shit. Get worked, kid. Oh. Well, thanks for your knife and baseball bat, friends. I wish I could have eaten one of you, though. Jack, I did it. I shot a man. That's it, kiddo. Just like that, and it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. That's it? It's all over? Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Barry Dodge spinning all that, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, this is normal? Well, to be honest, you came at a, well... An interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla, the Sabat. Oh, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred at stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. You're... you're losing me here, Jack. Oh, boy. Oh, I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you've got a cab to catch. Was hoping to fill you in on a little bit more, but... Ah, hell, you'll figure it all out. 
Uh, after a good day's sleep, and here's your gun, or we can try and keep it. Ooh, I like that. I will sleep over it, but I'd like to keep the gun. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's this bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> now that's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> good luck. Thanks, Jack. You've received two experience points by pressing the character editor key. You can access your character sheet and spend your experience points where you see fit. Unspent experience points will stay in your available experience pool. 